Hi everyone, in this lecture today we are going to talk about multiplexing and demultiplexing in the transport layer. So let's consider this example where there are two clients which are talking to this server. The, the processes that are running at the client are P1 and uh, sorry, at the server are P1 and P2, while the circular app, each of these clients has a single application running in it. Now you can see that the connections between the between the server between the server and the clients. So first is multiplexing. Let's assume that the client the server is actually sending data to the client. So there is multiplexing at the server. So these so here this is the connection between the server and this client, and this is the connection between the P2 is there is a connection between P2 and process P4 between the server and the client. So as you can see that uh, the two red circles here, these are the data that's being sent by the server. So there's multiplexing at the sender and has to be able to handle data from multiple sockets and had transport layer information. So these, there is data that's coming in from the application and you have to had, add transport layer header. This is going to be used for a while demultiplexing. Now there is also demultiplexing going on at the server. Once data is sent from the application P4 and P3 they, and they reach the server, they have to be demultiplexed. Once again, header information is used to, <clears throat> used to demultiplex the data coming from different processes and send it to the correct socket. So how does demultiplexing work? So the host is going to receive IP, da IP datagrams. Now each IP datagram has a source IP and a destination IP. And apart from that, it also has something called a source port and a destination port. So each segment has a source port and a destination port, while each datagram has a source IP and a destination IP. So the datagram is a, is a, is the, is the terminology for packet in the in the in the network layer, while the segment is the terminology for packet at the transport layer, and the segment has a source port and destination port, while each datagram has a source IP and a destination IP. There are also a bunch of other headers that are there in the transport layer segment and the IP packet, but we will only be concentrating on these four for this discussion. So the host uses the IP addresses, <clears throat> which are provided in the, in, the da, in the IP datagrams, and the port numbers to actually demultiplex and send the the, the segment to the appropriate socket. So we'll see we are an example how this works. Okay, so first let's connect, consider connectionless demultiplexing. So the first is when a host receives a UDP segment, and we will talk about UDP in greater detail later. UDP is connectionless, uh, is a connectionless service provided by the or connectionless protocol for the of the transport layer. What it does is checks the destination port in the sec and directs and using this destination port, it directs the UDP segment to the appropriate socket with the port number. So the important thing to note is that if the IP datagrams all have the same uh, same destination ports but have different source IP addresses or source ports, UDP is still going to direct it to the same socket. This is how UDP works. UDP just uses the destination port to determine where the uh, where to which socket the uh, the uh, the date segment has to be delivered. So this is connectionless uh, service. So let's look at how connectionless service works. So here, there, once again, we have a server and the two clients, and there's a single uh, process running at the server, and there are two uh, clients. First, <clears throat> this is uh, this is just uh, we just, this is the port number nine one five seven, as I show here, is the port number used by the client, and this. This is actually some a Python code for creating a, 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 a creating a socket and with a particular port number. If you are interested in how what this actually means, this is actually Python code. Similarly, the application here P four creates another creates a, a, a creates a datagram socket with the port number five seven seven five. Here it creates the the server creates a server socket with a and with port number 6428. Now for connectionless service, what happens is say P3 wants to contact P1 or say there the process P3 in, the, in, the, in the client is contacting the process P1 in the server. So the source port is filled as 9157 because that it is the client which is with or 
client, the process P3 in the client which is sending it. And the port number is 9157. So that is the source port. The destination port is 6428, which is the destination port of P1, of the process P1. And it's running at the server. So when the server contacts the, uh, contacts, the, uh, contacts the client or the process P1 contacts process P3, you can see that the source port and the destination ports are reversed because here the source port when the server is contacting the client in which our application uh, in which the process P3 is running, the source port here is 6428 because, the, <coughs> because this, this message or the sounds port less segment originated at the server and destination port is 9157. Now, when the <clears throat> when there is communication going on between the pro process P1 and process P4, I would like you to, <clears throat> to figure out what are the source and destination ports when these kind of when these trans these packets or these messages are exchanged between process P1 and process P4. This would help you to understand how how what are port numbers. Let's give you a better idea. So I'll, I'll urge you to use this example to try to figure it out yourself. Okay. So we looked at connection-less servers, and now we're going to look at connection-oriented <coughs> connect -oriented protocol and look at how the multiplexing work. An example of connection-oriented protocol is TCP. So in, in our transport-led discussion, we will talk about UDP, which is a connection-less protocol, and we'll talk about UDP, a TCP, which is a connection-oriented protocol. Remember, recall that in, TC, in UDP, we only use uh, uh, we only use the destination port for demultiplexing. On the other hand, in TCP, we use a, a four tuple for demultiplexing. So, so we use the source IP address, the source port address, the source destination IP address, and the destination port address for demultiplexing. Okay, so when the receiver receives all these values, it uses all these values to direct the segment to the appropriate socket. This <clears throat> Things to note is that the server host may support multiple, multiple simultaneous TCP connections and each of these uh, so TCP connections or sockets is going to be identified by its own photopole. Okay. So let's look at how connection-oriented ser <coughs> servers work. work with an example. Once again, <clears throat> there are two clients and in this example here, the uh, there is process P3 running at uh, one of the clients while the other Client has two process, uh, two process P2 and P3, and then there are four application, uh, three processes running in the server. As you can see, that unlike the connection less uh, service, here we have the four tuple. We have the source IP, and we have the port, and we have the destination IP as well as the port. So the the biggest difference here is the if you re, if you look at the if you look here is that there there is port 80 this is because this the application is running http that we are considering and http always communicates using port 80 so port 80 is always used at at each uh, at the server at each of these uh, processes so so if you if you look at this uh, communication that's going on between pro process p4 and p3 we see that the source ip which is going to be the source ip of the server there's port, which is port 80, which is the port 80 for process P4. Then there's destination IP, which is the IP address of this client, which is the address is A. That's why we have A here. And the port number is 9157. So that is the message that goes between P4 and P3. A message that goes between P3 and P4 has a source IP, which is A. And the port number is 9157. The destination IP and port are B, which is for this client. Right? And the port number is 80. 80 because it is using HTTP. So as you can see that there are three processes, uh, processes here and all of them use <coughs> and, the, and the destination uh, port for, is 80 for the server in all of this for all these different sockets because of HTTP. You can see that there are three different processes are running here and if you want to make the server run fast or make some optimizations you could actually have a threaded server and still uh, have the same uh, like you could have a threaded server so that you could do multi-threading and but you could still provide the same connection oriented demultiplexing with this i'd like to end this discussion and in the next uh, lecture we will talk about udp thank you